Subtle can take fractures. It's about 10% of all fracture in the proximal femur. The subtrochanteric fracture is a fracture between the lesser trochanter and a point 5 cm distal to the lesser trochanter. It is the worst area in the femur. There is a high compression and tensile forces. There is less vascularity, less healing potential and ability. It's made of hard cortical bone that doesn't heal well, and there are a lot of deforming forces on the proximal fragment. So it is flexed by the psoas and abducted by the gluteus and externally rotated by the short rotators. It's a high risk of implant failure. You need bone-to-bone -bone transfer in this area, especially if you're gonna open the fracture. There are two types of subtrochanteric fracture, the atypical and typical fractures. The atypical fracture from biphosphonate, there is a thigh pain, and the fracture may be seen on an MRI. Usually there is no history of trauma. Using biphosphonate for a long period of time may cause this atypical subtrochanteric fracture of the femur. The fracture may appear as a localized thickening on the lateral side of the femur. So how the fracture looks in the x-ray, it's easy to remember, it's caused by bending forces. To bend a bone, there will be two parts, the tension side, tension T transverse, so the transverse component will be on the lateral side. And the compression component will look oblique in the medial side. Transverse component on the latter side, oblique on the medial side. It looks like a spike on the medial side, and there is no common ocean. The typical fracture occurs usually from trauma, sometimes from high energy trauma, such as car accidents or a fall. In this case, we'll use a rod, and because the rod is inside the bone, not outside the bone like a plate, this area is suitable for IM nailing. So the rod location will result in a shorter liver arm and lower bending moment on the device. The rod will be closer to the center of motion of the body than the plate which is in the lateral surface of the bone, further away from the center of motion of the body. Therefore, the rods are subjected to smaller bending loads and less likely to result in fatigue failure. Also, the arm rods are minimally invasive and it does not destroy the extra medullary blood supply. They are load sharing, so you can initiate weight bearing. Rods are stronger than plates. You must reduce the fracture before reaming and insertion of the rod. The disadvantage is it can create varus and procarvatum deformity, which is flexion. More varus with trochanteric entry. Also, you may have perforation at the anterior cortex distally due to mismatch between the radius of curvature of the nail and the femur. The rod is not preferred in the treatment of subtrochanteric fracture that extend into the piriformis fossa or the greater trochanter. You probably need to use a fixed angle plate and you probably need to avoid excessive dissection medially and you may use bone graft to avoid non-union. You really need bone-to-bone -bone transfer medially and try to avoid early weight bearing. The plate induces fracture healing through primary bone healing. The rod induces endochondral ossification, secondary bone healing, more abundant bone healing. So how do you use these nails? 
if there is enough segment of the proximal fragment where you can put a diagonal screw, means you have a large piece, then you can use a standard nail. If you don't have enough to put a diagonal screw, then you need to put the screws on the head. They call it cephalomedullary nail. If the fracture extends to the piriformis fossa or the greater trochanter, you probably need to use a fixed angle plate.